Every year we consider all of the data collected for our recent reviews of cases, CPUs, and video cards, and then build our annual buyer's guides around those tests. Those are published on the website for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And the second guide for this year is today's GN's choice of best AIB partner video cards under $200 and it's a sort of roundup in that regard. The first guide was the top 1440p monitors we've used this year, if you're curious for more. But before getting to that, this content is brought to you by the Rosewell Cullinan Tempered Glass Case, which will soon be available for $120, with a free 700 watt balance power supply. Keep an eye out for that sale on November 21st on Amazon. Follow the link below for more. We've also got links below for all of the video cards in this GN's Choice video. This content draws a clear line between the price points for each major GPU that exists in the sub $200 market. So we looked around for cards that are at or below MSRP, which is rare, this generation of GPUs from both AMD and Nvidia, as many of you know and have pointed out. And thankfully, some of the prices are finally starting to fall in the latter half of the year. So this is a quick reference guide for the low end. You'll get the most depth with all the caveats and all that stuff in our major device reviews, the standalone reviews. But hopefully this helps create a sort of cheat sheet for sales coming up for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, things like that. We'll resurrect some of our benchmarks from this year to help with that as well. And keep in mind, prices mentioned here were at time of filming. So if you click the links below, you'll go to the card. The price may have changed, but uh, that's the best we got for you. Here's our table we put together on the website yesterday. These are devices which perform to our standards for the GPUs on the device. And also the cards that are listed here have to be priced lower than the competition or at least at MSRP. We're starting with the MSI GTX 1063 gigabyte OC card, which happens to currently have a $15 MIR mail-in rebate and is priced at the MSRP of 200 before MIR. The card uses dual axial fans for its cooling solution with the usual assortment of heat pipes and fins to do the rest. And to be fair, mail-in rebates are normally a huge pain and often have contingencies, but it's worth a shot as long as you're mentally prepared to end up spending 200 instead of 185. For those of you in other countries, as long as the GTX 1063 gigabyte is close in price to the RX 484 gigabyte cards, all of this content will remain relevant and if it's more expensive by more than a couple bucks, the deal worsens, obviously. The GTX 1063 gigabyte generally outperformed AMD's RX 484 gigabyte in our testing, as seen on these charts from our 1063 gigabytes versus RX 484 gigabyte benchmarks. Note, though, that our tests were with an EVGA 1063 gigabyte at reference clocks, or 1708 MHz boost, whereas the MSI OC version is cheaper and has a clock rate that's 51 MHz higher, and that's the one we're recommending here. In GTA 5, as tested back in October for that benchmark, we saw the GTX 1063GB performing better than the RX 484GB in averages and lows, generally running a few FPS faster in averages. Gears 4 was an interesting test as well. We saw better averages on the 1063GB with better frame times on the RX 484GB in this chart, but that is almost entirely because Gears 4 is inconsistent in its frame time delivery on all devices, really. And just in case you're curious, the 1063 gigabyte and RX 44 gigabyte are both capable of 1440p gaming at sort of easier settings, depending on the game. They're not really targeted at it, but if you wanted to, you could upscale in, for instance, GTA 5, which would run at about 60 FPS average on both devices with faster lows on the 1063 gigabyte. But we already have a full video and article specifically on the 1063 versus RX 484 gigabyte cards. You can check that out for the full depth as always. But uh, for now, we're recommending the MSI 1063 gigabyte card with its 185 post MIR price as of today, but that may go up to 200. And if it does, then look into our alternative choice, which is the RX 484 gigabyte card that we've got shown here. And that is currently shipping as a bonus with Civilization 6, and that's on a couple AMD devices. So if that's on your holiday buying list, then basically you're saving 60 bucks. If you're not buying it anyway, it's not really doing anything for you. So don't, don't dig into that hype, too, that marketing too much. But if you want it, then you save some money. So that is a worthwhile consideration and gives the 1060 some competition in a different way, which is a free game code. If you check Newegg, there is technically an RX 484 gigabyte card from PowerColor for $190, but the heatsink design sort of turned us off. The cooling will be a problem for single fan PCS coolers with this particular device, and that's important for sustaining clock rates. Instead, we'd recommend either the Gigabyte G1 Gaming RX 480 for $220 with a $20 rebate, so that brings it down to 200 
or the power color red dragon for $200 without any rebates. It's just 200 flat and both use axial fans for cooling, two of them. Gigabyte's G1 Gaming is pre-overclocked though to 1290 megahertz while the PCS card runs stock at 1266 and that's boost. The difference will be a few percentage points in FPS, though you can fairly easily apply an OC through Wattman if desired. We don't recommend the G1 Gaming unless you're getting the rebate, as that price is encroaching on RX 480 8GB territory, and the 8GB 480 or 1066GB would make more sense once you're north of $220 anyway. In our original content, we encouraged looking into the higher VRAM alternatives to these. Those would be in the $240 to $250 range. Now, the one advantage of the $200 cards, as we noted in those original reviews, is that if you are in a unique price situation where an extra $40 or $50 is the difference between a better CPU or adding an SSD versus not having one, then it might be worth saving the $50 bucks from the video card budget and putting it towards one of those upgrades. Next card, Power Colors RX 470 Red Devil is one of the best buys in this list, perhaps tied with MSI's 1063 gigabyte at 185. The RX 470 Red Devil is currently 170 after MIR, though the price did just increase. And it's sort of frustrating. The price was $160 after rebate yesterday when I wrote the article and posted it, but the base price, not the rebate price changed, the base price changed and increased to $185 now. So that brings it down with the rebate to 170 rather than the 160 originally. So it was at 170, which is actually the new MSRP for the RX 470. And it's a decent price considering the original launch prices of about $200 despite a 180 listing price. Uh, but still the card is cheaper than its competition. It's a decent card and we would recommend it, but Hopefully the prices drop again as we approach Black Friday. Just to give an idea of where the RX 470 stacks up against nearby competition, here's a look at our Metro Last Light chart from the GTX 1050 review. So that is important because it means it's using pretty recent drivers for both devices. The RX 470 performs at 70 FPS average in this particular game, a good deal ahead of the 1050 Ti. And the RX 470 also runs Battlefield 1, brand new game, with DX11 at 1080p Ultra settings with an FPS of about 75 average. With a 1050 Ti Gaming X, the more expensive MSI card at $160, $165 is 58 FPS average. So that's a big difference considering the Gaming X version is one of the cards for the 1050 Ti that's priced similar to an RX 470. The 470 makes a lot more sense to buy. In our review of the GTX 1050 Ti, we recommended the RX 470 over the 1050 Ti generally but the GTX 1050 over the RX 460. So there's been a bit of swapping between Nvidia and AMD here. We also noted one important point for the GTX 1050 Ti. If you can find them for MSRP at $140, not the $160 price range of a lot of the AIB partner models, they make sense for folks who would otherwise not be able to afford an i5 CPU. So for example, if an RX 470 eats into CPU budget and forces something like an i3, then the $30 savings from a GTX 1050 Ti can be put toward better components. The same argument we made for the 200 versus 250 dollars cards. Aside from this use case, the 1050 Ti is surrounded by two cards that handle its flanks well, so that does make it a bit awkward to recommend sometimes. And our GN's Choice article on the website lists the MSI 1050 Ti OC as an honorable mention. That's the $140 model with one fan, and it's shown on the screen now. But still, if you can grab an RX 474 gigabyte for 170 to 180, which is the new MSRP, Sapphire's got a few, Power Color's got a few, XFX has a few, then we'd strongly consider those instead. Finally, for the low end, we're recommending the GTX 1050 over the RX 460. The 1050 outperforms the 460 considerably in a few of the games we tested, and at least by some margin in every game we tested. It's just a better performer now. The 460 did have a price drop of $10 to $100 MSRP. Technically, there's a few that are online for about 96, but at 110, the GTX 1050 does make better sense at the low end in the same way that the RX 470 makes more sense at its price point than a 1050 Ti partner model at 165 or whatever it is. Zotac GTX 1050 Mini is one of the smallest cards on the market right now and marks itself the top of our list for SFF ITX or HTPC boxes. We found the GTX 1050 to be perfect for lower intensity games like Overwatch, Dota 2, CSGO, and Rocket League. And just as a mini sampling of our original tests, which you can find on the channel or the website, 
The performance for Overwatch on a GTX 1050 was about 92 FPS average with ultra settings at 1080p. Dota 2 operated about 148 FPS average, though had a wide frame time range across all tests and devices. And the GTX 1050 even handles GTA 5 with very high and ultra settings at about 57 FPS average. Pretty remarkable for this price range. If you wanted mods though, you'd probably want to go with the 4GB 1050 Ti or something better like the 470 because once you start adding those, the 2 gigabyte 1050 will begin to struggle a bit. So that's it for this buyer's guide. We'll be doing a few more of these to wrap the year, but basically digging back through all of the data from components tested this year, all the cases and coolers and SSDs, things that have gone through the lab, either saw publication a while ago or never made it to publication. We'll be revisiting all of that, compiling it into these roundups and hopefully help some folks out, make some decisions for the holiday season. So as always, Patreon link in the post roll video to help us out directly. We have a couple more of these coming up, so subscribe for more, and then we'll be getting back to the technical content with EVGA's VRM stuff pretty soon. It's already on the bench and was just burning up this room <laughs> right before filming. Uh, subscribe for more content. Links in the description below. I'll see you all next time.